Recently, Tom Bilyeu talked with Matthew Walker, PhD, a sleep specialist from the University of California, Berkeley. In this clip, Matthew Walker talks about sleep deprivation and hallucinations and why you must never stay awake to solve a problem. There's a link in the description below to the full interview. And I don't think it's a mistake that the Navy SEALs use it just catastrophic sleep deprivation as a part of their hell week to really find out like who's got the mental resilience to make it on the other side. Because when you're talking, because if I remember right, they get like three hours of sleep over five days or just something stupid like that. It's remarkably minimal. And they start hallucinating. You know, yes. I had a friend who was, um, who was in the British version of that. Um, and they were saying, you know, they were running around on these hills during sort of these combat training events. And they were just seeing sort of gravestones popping up in front of them. They were just delusional and hallucinating. What's going on? Like, what is it that causes us to hallucinate? Do we know the mechanism, whatever breakdown there is between the conscious and subconscious? I'm not even sure what's happening. Yeah, what we think is happening is that after some degree of sleep deprivation, you build up this pressure for the different stages of sleep. And one of the two main stages of sleep, of human sleep at least, is something called rapid eye movement sleep or REM sleep, which is the stage that is principally associated with dreaming. And what we've learned is that once you start to go through sleep deprivation and including REM sleep deprivation, the brain gets so starved of this thing called dream sleep that it just simply says, look, uh, at some point, I've got to get this thing called REM sleep. And if you're going to stay awake, I don't really care. <laughs> I'm just going to produce this state of REM sleep. And so it's almost as though you're awake, but the veil of REM sleep dreaming comes over the brain. And therefore, you're essentially dreaming while you're awake. And that's why you start seeing these hallucinations and delusions. That's our, our current understanding. All right, now that's really interesting. So one one of the questions I was most excited to ask you about is the nature of dreaming. So if the brain is saying, hey, look, I'm gonna do this whether you're awake or asleep, why is it so contextual? Like there's no question there are times where the dream is so bizarre, like I can't anchor it to my life, but a lot of yeah. times I can where I'm like, I know exactly why I started dreaming yeah. about that thing. Do we have a sense of what the brain is trying to do do with dreams we do and dreaming seems to offer at least two different benefits for the brain the first is creativity the second is essentially emotional first aid it's overnight therapy so point number one creativity one of the things that REM sleep actually does is it takes all of the information that you've been learning and I should take a step back it's during deep sleep, which actually happens more in the first half of the night, that those memories, those freshly minted memories that you've recently learned and laid down in the brain, deep sleep will hit the save button on those new memories so that you don't forget. So, so deep sleep strengthens and solidifies those individual memories. But sleep, we've learned, is much more intelligent than we ever imagined because thereafter, it's dream sleep, it's REM sleep that takes all of those individual memories and it starts to intelligently collide them and interconnect them. Essentially, it's informational alchemy. Um, or you could almost think of it like um, group therapy for memories that, you know, everyone gets a name badge and REM sleep gathers in all of these pieces and it forces you to go and speak to the people, not at the front of the room that you think you've got the most obvious connection with, but to the people at the back of the room that you think you've got no connection with at all. But it turns out that you do. It's a non-obvious one, but it's a potentially powerful one nonetheless. And so after dream sleep, you wake up with essentially a revised mind-wide web of associations every single day. And as a consequence, you are able to divine solutions to previously impenetrable problems. And it's the very reason that no one has ever told you to stay awake on a problem. 